Hello, I'm Pastor Scott Villain with HolyImpactMinistries.com. At Holy Impact Ministries, we believe the whole Bible is relevant today, and not just half of it. We also believe what our Messiah told us, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, when he said he did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. He didn't even come to change the crossing of a T or the dotting of an I in Matthew 5, 17 and 18. We also understand the Apostle Paul when he wrote in Romans 3.31 that we do not nullify the law by our faith. By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. If you'd like to know more about what we know to be true, please visit us at HolyImpactMinistries.com. In the meantime, we hope that this teaching would be a blessing to you. I would, however, like to address the matter of Timothy and Titus. Paul circumcised Timothy personally, and as we saw in our Acts 15, did Paul preach against circumcision teaching. We already know that James' judgment on the circumcision debate was to start the new converts out with four different things from the law that they had to do. Acts 15, 19. Therefore, my judgment, says James, is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, and from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. His reasoning for only making them do these four things is that all of the elders knew that these new converts would be sitting in the synagogues every seventh-day Sabbath listening to the laws of Moses being read out loud. And they knew that as they learned the laws of God from being in church, they would be driven by the Spirit to do the will of God on their own. James never says anywhere, nor does Paul, that they don't have to be circumcised. He's simply allowing the Spirit to move them to do so, which is the only way that circumcision is justified in the eyes of God. They must be led by the Holy Spirit of their own accord, to want to be circumcised. It's like someone forcing you to be baptized. If someone has to force you to be baptized, or you really, and you really don't want to be baptized, then your baptism is of no effect. You must have faith. When you decide to be baptized, you are doing so by doing works, and this is the fruit of your faith. And so it is with circumcision. And this was James' judgment in the matter. Acts 15.21 For from ancient generations Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogues. So James was clearly telling the circumcision group that eventually these converts would elect to be circumcised on their own, and that's the only way that circumcision is of any effect it has to be done willingly, not because someone forces you to do it, or because you think that by doing so that you are in some way earning your way into heaven. There must first be a circumcision of the heart and the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God that drives a born-again Christian to want to do the things of God. This, once again, is the fruit of our faith and the evidence of our faith. 1 John 5.3 says this, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. 
So we find in Acts 16.4 that Paul and Timothy are going out to deliver James' decree throughout all the cities and to let them know what James' judgment was concerning circumcision. Acts 16.4 As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decision that had been reached by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. Talking about James and the Jerusalem Council and the circumcision debate that just took place. So, before they venture out to these cities, what does Paul do? He circumcises Timothy. Why? Because Timothy had a Jewish mother and a Greek father. The Greek father would not allow Timothy to be circumcised, so he had not been. Timothy had a heart to follow the will of God, so Paul circumcised him, so that when they went into these cities, that they were full of Jews, that they would indeed know that Timothy was following the law as he should have been. Some people will try to fabricate the idea that the only reason that Paul circumcised Timothy was to impress the Jews so that they would come to the faith, so that they could somehow trick them into becoming believers. But this is scripturally unfounded and makes no sense in light of the fact that Paul was coming to deliver the decree that James had just laid down concerning circumcision. And we already know that James' judgment, it was for circumcision, it was not against it. The only difference was that James wanted the new converts to be led to be circumcised on their own, rather than to be forced by the circumcision group. Look at it this way. If in Acts 15, circumcision was abolished, along with the law, then why in the world would Paul circumcise Timothy while delivering a decree against circumcision? That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Would it have made any sense to circumcise Timothy while delivering a decree against circumcision? No, absolutely not. And would Timothy have undergone or gone through that procedure for no reason? Or just to trick the Jews into believing? I think not. Paul circumcised Timothy because he had to be consistent with the decree that he was delivering. Now, some will point to Galatians 2, where Paul was again found preaching against circumcision. But the reason he was found preaching against circumcision was because he was still dealing with the same circumcision group that he was dealing with in Acts 15, verse 1. They believed that circumcision was a means to salvation, and that is a false circumcision, not a one of faith. Once again, you cannot force someone to be circumcised any more than you can force someone to be baptized. So, of course, Paul is once again going to teach against that. If you were blessed by this teaching, please consider helping us reach the nations by making a donation today. Thank you, and Shalom.